Hi everyone, it's Brie here and welcome along to the channel. After last week's mammoth effort with so many problems, I decided this week to do something a little bit easier, a little bit more simple. So I found this little table on Facebook Marketplace and decided it was exactly the right size for what I needed for my own house. So we're going to take that little table. Um, even though it's in perfectly good condition, it's not quite the colour that I want. So I'm going to strip it back, um, restain it, and then put a bit of stenciling on the top to make it look beautiful. So without further ado, let's get going. As soon as the table came in the house, Miss Pushcat made it very clear that she loved it to pieces. Um, I really liked it too. I didn't like the redness of the stain, but the actual shape of the table and everything was beautiful. So I'm getting ready here to stain it. Safety first people, safety first. So putting on my mask and my gloves and my ooh, eye protection. <laughs> That's right. You can see at the back there, there's a little white chunk. That's where I, t I took it back to see what type of wood it was. Turned out to be a type of Malaysian timber called heavier, also known as rubber wood. Not that it's rubbery or anything like that. It's just, um, that's just the name of it. <laughs> so it was pretty hot and windy this day in Queensland, in Australia. And I was pretty concerned that... Um, that the stripper was going to dry before I had a chance to to take it off so I chucked a lot on um, it still did manage to dry out fairly quickly but um, it was only a couple of minutes I only left it a couple of minutes before I could strip it off again because if I'd left it any longer than that it was going to dry and it was doing that same thing that I mentioned in one of my previous um, videos it looks like egg rolls when it comes off it kind of all just rolls up like it's already drying and it just rolls up like an egg roll So once it was all stripped back, I started in with a 150 grit sandpaper and just uh, sanded off what was left. You'll, you might be able to see here that I, um, I, didn't, I didn't strip the legs. I'm not sure why. I should have, but I just didn't. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's just Brie being odd and inconceivable. Um, I have to thank... Lynn, who um, who bought me a coffee on Buy Me A Coffee this week. I was so excited to see a, 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 a something come up there. So if you want to uh, support me in that way, feel free. The um, proceeds from Buy Me A Coffee are going towards buying me some, um, some very well needed, some very, very deeply needed um, uh, bits of equipment. The next thing is going to be a, it's a it's a drop saw or a, a, a um, mitre mitre saw. I think they call it. Um, it's about two hundred bucks, and I'm getting there. But uh, that's a, I mean that's just the beginning of the list. So if you want to buy me a coffee, please feel free. Um, support the channel, and um, yeah. It uh, it didn't take very long to sand this guy back. He was very easy to sand. This timber just worked a dream. It was well worth it. So from here you can see that I'm, uh, I haven't done the legs. So I started just sanding them as they were. I did get a visit from my quality manager who said to me, hey, why don't you take the legs off? Because then it'll be easier to get into all the little groove pieces. And uh, 
I went, that's a really good idea, Push. I'm glad you're around to tell me these things. And she said, here to serve, Mum, here to serve. So this is me removing the legs, which was extremely easy. They were only held on by a couple of screws each. So removing all the screws and then I numbered um, all of the legs and all of the corners so that I would put them back on the places where I'd taken them off because these things tend not to like being put back into different places. So because I'd taken everything back to raw timber, I applied a wood conditioner to all of the pieces before I started staining. Um, this is a homemade wood conditioner and it's so easy to make. It's just half um, varnish and half mineral spirits. Or if you're in Australia, mineral spirits is called um, mineral turpentine. So you just mix those two together and lay it on. And what it does is it just puts a tiny layer of um, varnish on the timber and just makes it easier to put the stain on. If you're enjoying watching, why not subscribe to the channel? Um, I try to put a video out every week. Sometimes it's a little bit longer than that, depending upon how whether I get through a whole piece in a week. Um, yeah, subscribe, um, like this video and comment on it. That always makes me happy and makes the YouTube bots happy and uh, gets it in front of more people. And yeah, thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you want to. Thanks. Okay, so the stain that I chose is Cabot's Interior Stain in the colour Sassafras. I really like that name. It's brown without being a yellowy brown or a red brown. And that was particularly what I was looking for. I didn't want a high yellow tone and I didn't want a high red tone. So I found this colour on their, on their website, which um, is really good. It's got this little thing that you can choose the type of timber that you've got and then they've got all the different stains that you could use. And it's lots of fun and I looked around and found maybe two or three that I liked but um, the sassafras turned out to be the nicest one. I couldn't actually test it on this type of timber but I tested it on pine which is kind of a similar colour I think. <laughs> but yes, no, the colour came out absolutely beautiful and uh, I ended up putting two layers of stain on um, on the, the piece and the reason I did that is because I did take it off too quickly the first time around. If I'd left it a bit longer, who would have got the deeper colour that I wanted sooner but because I was very excited and, and took it off quickly, um, I then had to lay another layer down which was fine. <laughs> So now I'm trying to find the center of the of the piece um, so that I can put the stencil through the center. Um, it's only an A4 size stencil so I need to run it a couple of times across the uh, the top here. So finding the middle and setting it in place and then just going in with a little bit of sponge and a tiny bit of paint and starting the sponging process. What I learned while I was doing this was a couple of things. First of all, when you've just dunked your sponge in the paint, the first couple of taps that you do, do them off the picture because 
they can be kind of really thick and gross and can put big blotches on your on your uh, on your stencil and underneath your stencil um, the other thing is to make sure that you're always um, putting the the sponge down facing toward the inside so what I'm doing here at the edge don't do it that way turn your hand around and do it the other way because you end up um, bleeding off the edge which you'll see we've got a little bit of bleed here see the line where there shouldn't be a line that all comes off with um, with nail polish remover with acetone a little bit of mild acetone so yeah that was the, uh, the the learnings that I made and of course by the end I'd done the best one <laughs> but this is how it looks across the whole thing and I think it looks gorgeous I did have to um, extend some of the sides a little bit the, the, the corner ones because the table wasn't quite 100% square all right so this is me applying the varnish the whole thing got two coats of varnish as well um, because it's going into my house and into a space where it's not going to get a terrible lot of of where I wasn't too concerned with putting on layers and layers of varnish and you can see I'm applying the varnish with um, a sponge as well I have found that that is the best way to apply it I, I'm a total convert to applying varnish like that Varnishing was the last thing that we had to do and you can see me here I'm just checking it in the light to see whether there's any weird bits and you can see I found a weird bit there so I just went back over it uh, this um, particular varnish that I that I was using um, had a lot of working time so there was no problems with going back over it didn't leave streaks or anything like that all right so that was the last thing we had to do so here's our table before and here is the big reveal thanks so much for joining in if you like the video give me a big thumbs up and if you want to subscribe, push the bell for notifications and we will see you the next time. Bye.